New brand coming to the channel today, faster than a speeding bullet. Buckle up, grab the popcorn, and prepare for a fun new premiere. Uh, just in case you're wondering, even I'm cringing at those puns. Hey everybody, Josh Jarvinerd, welcome to Bish's RV. Actually on site here in Anderson, Indiana, at a new store only a couple hours away from my hometown here. Um, what was Modern Trailer in Anderson, Indiana, just outside of Indianapolis, is now a member of the Bish's RV team. And I think I'm excited for this because they have a ton of stuff. I've never been able to get on this channel before, and I am kicking it off today with their 25 rear kitchen uh, bullet premiere. Um, I, I figure if we're going to do something new, let's do something that really is different and fresh and exciting. This is, no, this is a shorter floor plan with opposing living room slides, which is about as rare as hen's teeth if you've ever been out there. It gives this thing a huge living room without being 35 foot long to tow down the road. And so many short rear kitchens suck. They have bad rear kitchens in a model called a rear kitchen, and this one does not. This is a, a newer update on their previous 24 rear kitchen premiere. Uh, <laughs> one of the things the old ones didn't used to have was drawers, but they have come a long way since then. The counter space, the drawers, the storage space in this is fantastic. And a lot of times a short RV does not have good campsite window coverage. This has a big picture window overlooking the dining area where you might be seating. And the TV can pivot around. So if you're standing in the kitchen, you're sitting at the theater seat, wherever you're at, it's it's pretty cool and comfy. It is a, uh, it's a nice couples model if you're going to spend a long time, but you also want to do some towing. So you want to, you, you want some good space when you get there for a while, but you don't want something too big to get down the road. It's a really hard to find mixture of features. We've also got a true queen bed up front. Um, this is a, a cousin to a Keystone Cougar, so we got that vaulted ceiling. We got those lithium Dragonfly batteries, the Solar Flex package, a bunch of cool things on this one. I am really excited to see what you think. And if you like how we continue to bring you new brands and, and new things to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button, like our video, and let's get in here because this one is fun, son. Now, the moment I stepped inside here, I became very excited because... I can count on one hand, and I don't even know if I can fully fill that one hand. The number of RVs made today with opposing slides and no island for just massive wide open space here. And islands can be nice for some extra prep space, but I think the way they accomplish this kitchen, I, I ain't mad at it. I don't know that it necessarily needs to. Actually, here's what's funny. I think they could go further with it because if you look, this RV has two pantries. You got one beside the fridge, and you have one over there beside the microwave and the stove. I guess you have one on either side of the fridge if you want to look at it that way. I think they could maybe even get rid of the one uh, to the right of the stove and just extend the countertop a little bit further. That's my two cents, but I I don't know that they need to. I, I think it's just fine how it is. I like the color palette in here. It's like, um, it's, it's not dark and it's not the same HOA brown that everybody else uses. Now, not only is this wide enough to play a half court, uh, you know, game of basketball here, wide open enough rather. It's also, you, see, you can see totally ventless in the flooring. They're using, uh, carpetless slides. That's that marine woven, uh, slide stuff. I do prefer it when the slide floors match the main floor, but that's just my nerdy preference. There's nothing wrong with what they're doing. What's funny is the material they're using is actually a higher grade than what my visual preference is. So that's kind of one of those funny things. Do you want a better look or do you want a better, uh, quality feature? Because they've gone with better quality here. It's just my personal opinion that I like it to look a little bit differently. Notice that pop-up power tower back there. And if you watch through this RV, look for these yellow stickers on various outlets. That's telling you that it's uh, prepped and run to the uh, the inverter prep on this RV. So if you do want to add an inverter, um, well, you can do that very easily here and power some of those household outlets straight off your uh, battery power. Um, another thing on the floor, still talking about the floor here. It's hyperdeck flooring, just like the uh, the bigger Keystone Cougars that you may have seen me cover before. Uh, what that means is that it's a all composite floor structure, which is funny because even most Asdell using RVs, like this doesn't use Asdell in the walls, but even most Asdell using RVs still use wood in the floor, and this does not. Um, the uh, the table and chairs arrangement here, pardon my vest, as I was breathing all the hot air in here, this RV warmed up considerably, but the uh, table and chairs in here, uh, I think is really, really handy because, um, you know, you could potentially, maybe most of the time you only want two chairs. Maybe it's just two of you. You don't need four chairs. 
there's just extra space around that table. You can always put a dog kennel or something under that, but please don't travel down the road with your pets in the trailer. It's not, it's legally unsafe uh, to, to have people in a travel trailer while you're going down the road. To me, that means it's not safe enough for my pets. You know, if my, my, my dog got killed because of a vehicle accident and I left him in the trailer, I'd just never forgive myself for it. So don't, don't be silly about that. That's my two cents. You're seeing here what I call the view from the driver's seat, sitting here at the theater seat. It's also, uh, as I get up here, look at the back wall. You see how it's vaulted up? Uh, I'm not using fisheye tricky camera angle lens mode. I don't like to do that if I can ever possibly help it. This does have the same kind of like almost six inch vaulted roof system as a uh, a Keystone Cougar. And I'm not. And I know I keep comparing this to Cougar. Um, Bullet Premier stands absolutely on its own. It is a well, you could say Premier level product. <laughs> but my my the reason I keep doing that is if you watch this channel regularly, you've probably seen more cougars than bullets. So I'm trying to help you, uh, you know, uh, cut the learning curve a little bit. Got the electric space heat and Tootsie Toast and, uh, you know, Phalanges Fryer down here. We've got a lot of names for those things nowadays. And if you're noticing, this is actually um, a, uh, it's an all 12 volt TV. It's one of the biggest. It's a 40-inch 12-volt TV. So it's got, like, integrated soundbar. Basically, the TV is your entertainment center. Rockwood does a lot of that. Ember does a lot of that. It's a really handy feature if you do want to get uh, away from parks a little bit. But take a look at this. That TV can also pivot around. There's a little bit of storage below it, or behind it and below it, as it were. But again, those chairs, they're not bolted to the floor. They're free-floating. Or you could totally get them out of the way. And this RV has blackout roller shades anywhere it can. Although, in the kitchen area, they are required to do a couple metallic blinds for fire code reasons. Um, the uh, countertops in this are a solid surface. I love the space for a wastebasket under the sink. And again, the amount of cabinet storage capacity in this little trailer is absolutely fantastic. Now, if you've seen a theater seat, it feels like if you've seen one, you've seen them all. But I actually, I like that hidden little armrest contraband storage that they have right there. If I was a kid, that'd be a place where I'd stuff a G.I. Joe to hide it from my older brother, and then I'd forget it was there and I would lose it. But, eh, you know, that's just a little glimpse into my life right there. Neither, neither here nor there. Now, you may notice they are using the population controlling theater seat. Um, different brands use different fixtures. That's just what they're doing. Uh, I would, you know, if if that was like uh, the Rockwood theater seat where it has a folding middle armrest, I would love that because sometimes it is nice to try to, you know, slide over next to your significant other or sometimes it's nice just to kind of, you know, kick your legs up and lay sideways across one of those things depending on uh, kind of what you're doing, how you're feeling right there. So I think we've pretty much uh, covered the living room area just to kind of complete the walkthrough and the visual here for you. Moving on up to the east side, going right past our control panel and our controls for our tankless on-demand water heater. What do you think about the location of this? It kind of makes sense because it's with the rest of the controls. It's next to the bathroom, but you do have to kind of reach outside if you're wet and naked. That's not super fun. But if you're in the, you know, coming from the kitchen, like it's centrally located, so I think they did the best they could. And you may notice... They do not use the peekaboo, I smell you, entry doors. Everything is fully framed out in these. What? Oh, what? What, you want to fight? We got a drunken octopus looking for a fight over here? You need to calm down, buddy. I will screw you up, which means I will unscrew your eyeballs and you'll fall off that door. How do you like that? Yeah, he doesn't have much to say now, does he? <sighs> it's hard. It's hard having to be tough on guys like that. Anyway, porcelain foot flush stool and folks, that is freaking fluffy friendly right there. They did an awesome, awesome job of that. Moving up here, they've also got some really nice linen space in this bathroom, and I'm giving them major bonus points here by the fact that that is not open face bathroom storage where your stuff could possibly fall out while you're jiggle banging and roller quaking down the road. So thank you, Bullet. Well done there. Um, with the vaulted ceiling, it's just tall enough for a person like me wearing shoes a little over six foot tall, peach fuzz on my head, to be able to stand up there uh, and not have to put my head necessarily up in the bubble. I love the uh, sliding panel shower door and big rectangular shower that we're looking at. And take a look at uh, this. You've got also some nice storage under the sink. 
I almost wish the left or the right hand shelf wasn't there. So I'd have space for like a, a little bathroom wastebasket. And you may notice once again, no floor vents. So you don't have any kind of place where you can get any sort of dripping, dribbling or sprinkles down inside that thing. The ventless flooring system continues up in the bedroom as well. This is yet another area that's really obvious where that vaulted ceiling kind of comes into play here. Now this is 50 amp. We're looking at it with one air conditioner today, but it is, you see that junction box over there on the right? It is prepped and ready for a second one if you are so inclined. Now they're doing the same blackout roller shades here that they did in the living room, just to give you an idea. And something else I really like, now I am up close and personal, so it's hard to give you a full view of this. Uh, Cause again, I don't do wide angle nonsense. I don't want to lie to you with a camera. Uh, it is a 60 by 80 true queen bed. So they're not using the shorty McShort pants bed or anything like that. It's uh, just overall, I I like what they've done in this bedroom. Another nice find, easy lift gas strut uh, assisted storage under the bed. And then a thing that Bullet and Keystone have done for years. They have this uh, basically laundry hamper built right in right there. And uh, that can be such a handy thing. A, a place to put yesterday's clothes now that it's today. That's sometimes hard to find in the RV industry. You've got it built right in here. And I love those headboard power pockets. Household and USB plugs on both sides of the bed. And did you notice the hanging side closets in this and the third bonus closet all have adjustable and or removable shelving? There are so many simple, smart, functional features built into this. Um, it's not an accident that Premier has been, well, <laughs> a, I guess you could call it a Premier level travel trailer for a long, long time. However, it does have an Achilles heel. And you're looking at it. To get the RV with opposing slides as short as possible, when you close that campsite slide out, it, folks, it just flat blocks the wall off. There's just no getting through it. However, Depending on what you're willing to consider and tolerate, there is kind of a way around this. Because this is a cable-driven slide system, which can allow you to deploy the slide only partially. And if you're okay with that, then you can get in here, you can get to the fridge, the kitchen stuff becomes very functional. It is not recommended that you sit in and occupy any slide out, generally speaking, in almost any R uh, towable RV, uh, unless it is fully extended. So keep that in mind. But here's what I'm getting at. Um, if you can open these big swing out stable steps, then you can open the slide because the steps stick out further than the slide. Even when the slide is fully extended, which it isn't right now, even when you, because when you swing the steps down, they will occupy more space. So I'm gonna give this thing a B plus for travel access. And that's very generous considering you do have to monkey with a slide to make that happen. But here's the thing. There is a way to have refrigerator access uh, to this RV without ever touching uh, the slide buttons. We're gonna cover that in a few minutes. Now, just to kind of give you a little bit of a history lesson to get you caught up, because um, we haven't had Bullet on this channel like new ever before. This is a very first, I'm super excited about this. They have three segments, three subsets within their family. They start with the Bullet Crossfires. That's their smallest, lightest, least expensive series. And then you move up to a full Bullet or Bullet Ultralight would technically be the, uh, the general name here. And a lot of brands, you know, they'll have a high, low series and that's where they end. Bullet has always... Uh, had a third member of the family called Premier. And I think a lot of people don't realize that Premier is a bullet because it says Premier on the front, but basically does everything the bullet ultralight does and then it kicks it up a notch like Emerald Legacy. Now looking at towing specs over here, um, I'm going to say that this one has maybe some half ton potential, which is rare for opposing slide travel trailers. And the reason I'm being a little bit cautious about that is that hitch weight. It's not so much the length. It's not so much the, even the total GVW weight. It's the fact that this thing fully load or pardon me, the hitch weight of this one is just under 900 pounds before cargo. So by the time you go adding cargo into this thing, um, it may overload the, the, the hitch weight payload rating of some half-ton vehicles. Not all, 
but you're gonna wanna double check on that. Now, a general three quarter ton will probably get the job done all day. If you're familiar with our Cougar in Montana videos, the same uh, twin 100 amp hour, so a total of 200 amp hours of Dragonfly lithium batteries are standard on these. And between that and their 200 watt solar package, I don't even have, like, if, if you look over to the left, my little red battery box sitting down there looking so lonely because it's not getting any attention right now. I don't even have to hook my battery box up to this thing because it's doing all the work for us like some scrubbing bubbles. Now, uh, slam latches on the baggage doors are one of the nicer kind of uh, moving on up features here. And just all, like Montana's, like big Montana fifth wheels, the slam latches actually have a little bit of a lock here. You have to manually disengage it and it catches itself, which is cool. Um, I also really want to give Bullet some credit. Bullet is a brand with, uh, they've been around for a while. They're a brand with some history. They've been in it for a minute. And they went through and revised all of their uh, travel trailer floor plans in this series to include that uh, enclosed docking center that you saw over there, which is a lot of brands won't take the time to re-engineer stuff. And this big wide, wide storage is better than tall storage, in my opinion, because cargo can fall down if you stack it vertically. And maybe it slides left or right, but it won't crush stuff. I love that pegboard over there great little organizer feature just like uh the cougars that you see we do have a level of inverter prep through the rv uh we're looking at the base solar flex package that every single keystone rv has 15 amp mppt victron charge controller while not massive amperage really good quality components right here and keystone's about the only brand i've seen that is uh, doing a dedicated disconnect for their solar packages. The reason that's important is if you like take the battery off this for winter storage or something like that, because snow might cover this uh, solar panel and it may end up you know, not allowing the solar package to do what it needs to do. Well, uh, it's really nice to be able to disconnect that controller so that, uh, or the, the panel from the controller, so the controller doesn't end up going into nuclear meltdown mode. Now you may have noticed tankless on-demand water heater, and it's not as obvious from here, but this does ride on a different chassis. This is not a Lippert I-beam frame. This is a Norco huck-bolted chassis made with HSLA steel, high strength, low alloy. Uh, basically lighter, but stronger. It's a Z-frame, not an I-beam. Um, and if you saw it on its own, you'd be like, that's not, that's not enough, but it's just better materials and advanced engineering uh, is what this thing rides on. And I've always felt if you want a strong house, you want to start with a strong foundation. That's just my two cents on the matter over here. Now <clears throat> I kind of saw it from the, uh, other direction, but just to kind of showcase things here for you. We are TPMS prepped. That's what that little box on the right hand side is for you. And just in case you're uh, wanting to enjoy some music, it looks like we have a rubber band right there. Um, <clears throat> told you the puns were gonna be awful today. Uh, all power corner jacks. Again, like the smaller Cougars, they don't go up to auto leveling on these though. That's where there is a little bit of a handoff to, to big Cougar. Um, the underbelly though, it is enclosed. It is forced air heated. This does have a very respectable extended season uh, package. I think a 30,000 BTU furnace on these. I'll see if I can't verify that later. Um, I want to talk about one thing here, though, and I don't have a really great opportunity to display it with our parking today. It's got a decent sized awning, but remember, it's a short trailer, and with an opposing slide, a chunk of that awning space is eaten up by a deep dining and entertainment slide. That might be a problem for some folks, but as always, I'm going to tell you the good with the bad so that you can decide if that's the right RV for you. Now, another thing uh, I wish I had a better opportunity to display for you is that this has a little mini camp uh, kitchen cook and convenience station right here, but I ain't gonna be able to get you the best view of it. Wait a minute, I'm an idiot. We can't see the camp kitchen. Or I could just close the slide out So like I was saying, <laughs> we do have a little camp cooking convenience station over here. Look at that. Suddenly the grill looks normal when someone's not an idiot. Oh, I'm so, I'm so frustrated with myself. Now, again, I'm sure you got the idea. I don't want to spend a lot of time on this, but you know, I said there's some extra space over here. If you do add an inverter, the outside refrigerator actually, um, you know, it could be powered going down the road. So uh, while we can't get to the inside fridge without opening a slide, remember 
you could potentially have the outside fridge running if you do need, like maybe you have medications you need to keep cool and you're going down the road. You do have the ability to do that here. Hope you appreciate the extra time I'd put into that, thinking with my brain grapes. And by the way, that big, tall, heavy baggage door for that camp cooking convenience station, whatever you wanna call it, has the same magnet latching hold back system as the other baggage doors. So if you're sitting there and you bump it or somebody shakes the RV inside or whatever, like they throw a football because your sports ball team lost the big, hoopla, whatever, well, it's not gonna fall and hit you on the head. Like I should have had a V8. I'm so mad at myself. Now, this is something I'm, I'm curious about, you know, personal opinions on this. I've seen a lot of RVs. There's a, a, a galvanized steel plate laminated into this wall where if you wanted to mount an outside TV of reasonable size, you could do that. But man, I am spooky about drilling into my fiberglass to that i just say no thank you that just it just doesn't feel right to me once again i do like the uh the the campsite window coverage it's better than you would think looking at the front of the rv when you're actually in the rv and like you know in the kitchen and in your dining and stuff the the viewing is not bad once again that power awning does go clear over the slide but in a way it's a, sort of like having a free slide awning built in. Um, I may be reaching a little bit on that, but that is supported by some comments I've actually seen come in from some viewers. So there is some validity to that. I love that these do have a full backup camera. That is something that the smallest member of the Bullet family, the Crossfires, do not have, but the Ultralight and the Premier both do have. Because years ago, Bullet did not have a walkable roof, but that changed. And it's easy to tell when it changed. Um, even though it, it's totally unrelated, these two things happened at the same time. If you look at a Bullet or a Keystone Passport that has power stabilizers, it has a walkable roof. They made those changes at the exact same time, even though they're totally unrelated. So you don't even need to climb up there to find out. It's very simple, very obvious that that is the case right there. Now. They are using cable-driven slides. Um, one of the handy benefits of that is if for some reason you do need to partially crack the slide open, you totally can, but we already saw it in road mode, so I think that kind of speaks for itself. So if you like what you see right here, stop into our Anderson, Indiana store, meet our team. This facility is incredible. This is one of the nicest physical facilities and layouts I've ever seen. It's so easy to get in and out, towing a trailer around. They have fantastic people here. Like. Uh, it's only a couple hours away from my front door. It's like these are the same Midwestern corn fed people that I grew up with. These are my people and I am so glad that our team and our family has expanded a little bit. And I'd love for you to meet them and see what you think. Even if you just want to drive by and just try it on for size. See what they see see how everybody feels basically. In the meantime, of course, I'll leave you a link in the video description to check for pricing and availability assuming we have any in stock cuz this is a popular one. I was lucky to find one here today. And when you're ready, we're ready, and we still don't do hidden dealer fees. We just keep doing everything else good for you. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.